I'm going to preach from the word it is finished. I'm going to read from my own translation. And uh, it's about the most liberal I could come up with. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things had been accomplished to fulfill the scripture, said, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine was there. So they put a sponge full of sour wine on a hyssop branch, brought it to his mouth. And when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it has been accomplished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just pray, God, that you'll add your blessing to this word, that you'll help me to share, I pray, in Jesus' name, amen. My dad loved boxing. He bought the first television set in the 50s so he could watch the Gillette Thursday night fights and all the relatives would come over and watch it. I used to creep down on the step and try to peek through the things and watch. I remember dad, he couldn't take Maxie Bear. He said, that bum, he should have never been the heavyweight champion. Well, they came up with a story called Cinderella Man. Boy, I love that movie. It's about Jim Bradford. Jim was a pretty good boxer, and he was actually making money at it. Until one day, he hit this guy, the guy went against the room, he starts falling forward, Jim hit him, and the guy dropped his head right at that time, and Jim broke his, his right hand and lived his way through the fight, and they pulled his license. This is right in the beginning of the Depression. So here, poor Jim Bradford, he's in this line of men. There's a gate there. It's for the, he lived in Jersey. He was known as a, a, a Bergen County. But he goes to New York, goes there, and um, they're all trying to get on the docks, you know, to work. And there is a while he get picked and all. Well, they lost their apartment. They must have moved into Newark. It was a really bad neighborhood to a downstairs apartment. Um, things got so bad, they actually lost, lost their electric. Uh, poor mother was out there, and she's, on well, the old billboards, they had the lattice, and she's taking the lattice off it so she could burn it in the coal stove. And things were just really, I mean, re really, really bad. And then one day, his manager comes by and he says, Hi, Jim, how you doing? He goes, what are you doing out uh, coming over here from New York? He said, well, this is the reason I'm coming for you. I got to fight for you. He said, what are you talking about? I lost my license. I can't fight. He said, no, really, I'm not doing you any favor. Uh, this guy is a good fighter and nobody wants to fight him. They're all giving excuses that, that they're not in shape. Now here, poor Jim, he's not in shape. All he's been doing is working on the, at the loading docks. So anyway, he goes, he beats the guy. Sets him up for another fight, he beat the guy. He set him up for another beat the guy. Next thing you know, he's fighting Maxie Bear. Can you believe it? And that clown, he hit Jim blow the belt twice. He thumbed him a number of times. Uh, both of them had gone down a couple times. They went the whole, the whole distance. And then they're waiting and waiting and waiting. And finally, they said, with well, you're not know, decision, the new heavyweight champion, Jim Bradford. Well, everybody was crazy. Uh, everybody in his home uh, parish there, the, the, you want to believe that they, the, the, the priest actually had the radio on, and everybody was praying for him. And, uh, and, and just everybody was praying. And things just turned around like crazy. Remember before the fight, they asked him, they said, what are you fighting for at your age? Because he wasn't a kid. And he said, for milk. For milk. For the kids. So anyway, everything, they had actually buy a new home. They, they uh, lived there the rest of their life. It was just a beautiful story. But as great as I love the story, Cinderella, man, there's nothing like the one we have, we're celebrating today. Celebrating his life and his death. My goodness, think about Jesus. He was maybe two years old, no more than that. And his parents had to flee to Egypt because the king of Judah wanted to kill him. Talk about a bumpy story, huh? And then through his whole life, 
I mean, one time they threw him off a cliff. One time they tried to stone him, but they were unsuccessful. I, I think it kind of, kind of like a, a football player. He kind of dodged right through him. I don't know how he did it. I would have loved to see that. And he, um, and then of course he was hounded. Oh my words! They, they criticized everything he did, everything he said. Just everything, and then we come to this day, you know, it was start so Friday, you know, uh, that night, you know, uh, Thursday night, and, you know, they rest him at night, they keep him up all night long, they got him blindfolded, they're hitting him, they're saying, prophesy, Jesus, who hit you? And they're just giving the hardest time. Finally, <clears throat> in the morning, they take him over to Pilate, Pilate was up by then, and Pilate can't find any reason to him, but anyway, he has him scourged. Terrible whipping. And then here he is, he's going through, the, going down the streets, and he's hauling this thing. I don't know if he made it to the city gates or not, and he's got to go up. Gagolfa's not high, but it is a rise in the, in the ground. And he was running out of steam, no wonder. So they got somebody to carry the cross for him. They get there, they nail the cross, they prop him up. And we've been going through all the words that he said. What I'm saying, why I translated it, because it is complete, it, Jesus said, it has been accomplished, is that this, is, uh, this tense in the Greek is that it shows something that started in the past. And it goes right up to infinity almost. The scriptures say that Jesus was, was the Lamb of God that was sacrificed from the foundations of the earth. Jesus' whole life was for our redemption. The litany in the book of prayer, uh, book of common prayer, it gives all these petitions for everything from drought and you name it, you name it, you can find something in here. But then it goes by what the appeal is. And he says, by the mystery of the Holy Incarnation, the very fact that he was born of a woman. He was incarnate, not by, like us, he was incarnate by the whole, uh, his Father was the Holy Spirit. But he was incarnate by his Holy Spirit, by his Holy Nativity, his birth in a manger, by his circumcision, by his baptism, his fastings, and his temptations, good Lord, deliver us. By thy agony and bloody sweat, by the cross and the passion, by the precious death and burial. And then he goes on to the resurrection. His whole life was led up to this. The whole thing was for our redemption. It's easy to look at this and say, I was finished, he was glad it was over. Yeah, he was. But what he was stating here was the fact that everything that had to be done, that we could be saved, that we could be redeemed, that we could be uh, set free from our sins and all that goes with that, he said it was complete. And as I have said so many times, there's nothing we can do to add to our salvation. There's nothing we can do to take away from our salvation. Jesus did it all. Jesus did it all. He accomplished everything for us. Let us pray. Heavenly Lord Jesus, we thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you, Lord, that, that you, you accomplished all this for us. Your whole life, Lord, all that you went through was for our redemption. And there you proclaimed it to everybody in hearing this, Lord, that it was done for our sake. And we give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.